Yeah, so that is a very interesting question. Even if it's natural, it's clear that it's very different uh, from uh, the known comets in the solar system uh, because uh, so far it uh, shed mostly carbon dioxide um, uh, and uh, uh, very differently from uh, comets that we are familiar with in the solar system that they are water rich. Um, and also it had a glow uh, in the direction of the sun instead of uh, going in the opposite direction, the way we see for comets, and, and has uh, nickel with very little iron. So all kinds of uh, anomalies that uh, we are not familiar with. And we can once we understand uh, what these mean, uh, once we know more about its nature, uh, then we can infer where it may have come from. Um, it, it came with a very unusual speed of 60 kilometers per second. Uh, relative to the sun when it entered the solar system. And that's uh, much higher than the typical uh, uh, local population of stars. So if it's natural, it should have come from an old star. The, the old stars are usually uh, uh, getting a lot of kicks to their velocities uh, during their lifespan. And uh, in addition, um, uh, uh, it should have formed under circumstances that are different than uh, uh, solar system uh, uh, comets and uh, if it lost uh, a substantial fraction of its mass as uh, uh, when it came close to the sun we can analyze that and figure out uh, its uh, composition nature now if it's technological of course uh, it's a completely new experience for us and uh, this is a giant object uh, bigger than a city uh, so the question is uh, how uh, did the civilization launch such a massive object and what kind of uh, power supply does it have inside? Uh, you know, our biggest rocket is a Starship, which is less than 100 meters, less than the size of a football field. This one is the size of a city. It's very different dimensions. So uh, the, there are probably a lot of things for us uh, to learn from uh, whichever technological civilization sent it. And uh, the best way to learn is by getting as much data as possible about it uh, when we have the opportunity. The, 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 the benefit of 3i Atlas um, is that it came in the plane of the uh, planet. So we have a lot of observatories that can look at it. It's also very big, so it's quite bright and we can detect it with many instruments. So altogether, it's a gift from interstellar space. And I see it as a blind date. Uh, and in a blind date uh, of interstellar proportions, um, uh, it's very important to observe the other side rather than to have an opinion uh, prematurely. Talking about uh, some opinions, A.B., I would like to ask you about Elon Musk. Uh, he was talking today about uh, the history of Atlas, and he, he said it would obliterate a continent. Uh, what do you think about uh, these remarks from, from Elon Musk? Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, uh, he was talking with Joe Rogan on the podcast uh, a, a couple of days after I appeared on Joe Rogan. Uh, so you can check uh, the details of what I talked with Joe Rogan as well. But um, uh, what Elon Musk says is correct. I mean, the mass of this object is uh, uh, bigger than 33 billion tons. So uh, uh, it's comparable to the mass of uh, the asteroid that killed the uh, uh, dinosaur 66 million years ago. It's a very massive object that would create a lot of damage if it collided with Earth. Uh, but as of now, it doesn't seem to approach uh, Earth. It, it, it would be relatively far, so we don't need to worry about it. Uh, the only thing, uh, if, if it's technological, it might actually release some uh, uh, mini probes that we can look for, or we should watch out its non-gravitational acceleration, whether it uh, changes direction and starts approaching the Earth, then of course everything will change. Well, a lot of questions about uh, these three Atlas. Uh, I would like to ask you about, uh, about yourself. Uh, Avi, you have been criticized for, for challenging the, the scientific consensus. Uh, why do you think the academic establishment reacts uh, like that to the ideas uh, that uh, are not the, the ordinary, are a little different? Uh, what is your uh, answer for, for these people? Well, science is a great privilege because it allows us uh, to stay curious and uh, not assume that past knowledge describes everything we see. So uh, science should be guided by data, by observations, rather than by prejudice. We know that from the days uh, when the Vatican 
uh, basically put Galileo Galilei in house arrest because he said something different than they were arguing for. Uh, uh, and the earth uh, was moving around the sun for 4.5 uh, billion years before the Vatican even existed. So um, whether my colleagues are saying something or I say something is completely irrelevant as to uh, what the nature brings to our backyard. We just need to observe it, collect as much data. And in case we see anomalies, we should uh, be curious about them rather than uh, uh, push them aside. And the reason is simple. Uh, a technological visitor to our backyard, uh, something that was sent by another intelligence, uh, poses uh, immediate consequences to uh, the future of humanity. And we need to consider it seriously because even if the probability for that is small, the implications are huge. And when you multiply small probability by huge implications, it means that you need to take it seriously. The, this is called the black swan event. And the intelligence agencies take seriously uh, you know, events that could have a low probability but have huge implications. Scientists are not used to that because they often deal with uh, very little consequences to society. If we were to consider uh, an exploding star at a distance of billions of light years, you know, nothing will change in our daily life. But when we have a visitor to our backyard, uh, it might enter through the front door. And so we should take seriously the possibility that it might be technological and use as much data as possible to figure things out. And the, uh, those critics that say we should not discuss this possibility because it's unlikely, they don't understand how uh, uh, we need to face societal threats. Um, and uh, it's a very different situation than we usually encounter in science.